Welcome to Let's Talk Brock. Okay, welcome to this episode of the Let's Talk Brock podcast. I'm your host, Liam Nielsen, and joining me today is Alex Mohammed, a uh, graduate of the Brock Sport Management Program and current program specialist at the Jays Care Foundation and the Toronto Blue Jays. Alex, thank you for coming on the show today. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing good. Thanks for, for having me, Liam. It's always, it's always cool to have an opportunity to speak about Brock and, and things that are going on, so I appreciate, I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, I'm excited to connect here for me. I mean, personally, like it's always good to talk to uh, SPEMA alumni as well and see sort of what they're doing in the industry. Um, so I always like having those opportunities. So we can dive right into it. I want to get into your career and sort of Brock experiences a little bit later. But um, right off the top, if we can go all the way back to when you first made that post-secondary decision. So coming out of high school, uh, what was that like for you? What led you towards Brock initially? What made it a good fit for you? I think for myself, I, I grew up playing uh, competitive baseball in Brampton and there was a, a time where I knew like playing baseball wasn't wasn't going to be my my career path. So uh, looking at Brock being a school that had sport management, that was something that caught my eye very early when I was in high school. And then when it, when I got into grade 12, um, I know I visited fall uh Brock in the fall and then again in, in the spring at, at open houses uh, and I came with my parents and I, I was already sold on the sport management program but bringing my parents there to see the campus we got to sit in um, at open house we got to listen to a uh, professor speak about the program I think for my parents that sort of give them some reassurance because I think growing up saying I want to go into sport is, is not always a thing that uh, parents were used to hearing especially mine um, but uh, just visiting the campus, I think that was that was what it was for me. I, I knew about the program that I came to the campus. I saw it was mid-sized or um, it was all in one spot. It was like a little community um, walking around, getting to see those things. And that that's kind of what sold me on it. And uh, and yeah, it was, it was probably one of the, the better decisions that I've I've made in my life thus far. So, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I actually had a very similar experience, just like seeing the campus for the first time. You really get the sense of community, um, how it's sort of like off on its own away from the rest of the city. It's sort of like its own little town over there. So I definitely uh, definitely hear you on that one. So you're at Brock, you're in the sport management program. Uh, when did you first start getting involved sort of outside the classroom? So uh, obviously there's opportunities throughout all four years. But what were some of the experiences and opportunities that you took advantage of at Brock? Uh, I think the first one was was in my second year, I volunteered with the varsity baseball team. Um, so I wasn't playing on the team, but rather helping uh, the game day operations. So I think there's a fourth year class that helps to oversee the different varsity sports and run some of the activations there, the social media. It's, I think it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a course there. And I was just a volunteer that did it in my second year. Um, got to sort of see what that was behind the scenes, even if it was, collegiate sport not professional but that was a cool experience and then in my second year um, I started working uh, for Brock Sports through the intramural department so um, I was a convener so there got to in my first year I, I played intramurals and that was a way me and my friends got to keep active and that was one of the big things about university I think that made my experience uh, so great but in my second year I was a convener um, so they're overseeing planning uh, designing different like inner school leagues that were going to take place on campus. And I think for myself, that was like the first big time I was involved, like on campus, of course, in classes, you do those things. But after that, you get to meet a whole bunch of whole set of people. They're not just people from sport management, people from rec and leisure, people from kin, uh, like uh, individuals who wanted to teach. Like there were such a cool variety of people that you met there. And uh yeah, it was a really cool job to work on campus. You got to make some money, but you also got to you got to do something that sort of tied into what your degree was trying to do or uh, what I hope to do sort of moving forward. Yeah, really good on-campus job for sure, especially for SPEMA students. Did you ever do any refereeing in intramurals? I never I never refereed. I, I know how I was growing up playing sports, but uh, in my first year, it was, it was a little bit intimidating to do that. But the people that I know that, that did that, I, I really admire and in my second year, I was a convener. And then in my third year, I was a coordinator of officials. So that role was actually hiring the staff, the student staff who were gonna be the officials or be the referees. Um, so again, just sort of moving into a different role in different realm, um, 
helping staff or students on campus find an on-campus job. And then my role was scheduling them, um, taking care of the payroll and things like that, and just ensuring they were showing up, they knew the rules, um, and students weren't uh, students weren't going after them when they were trying to chase chase an intramural shirt down. But uh, no, that was a, a cool experience. But no, I I never maybe a couple times when staff didn't show up, I had to jump in and uh, and referee. But for the most part, um, I, I stayed out of that realm. No, I was gonna I was gonna say the exact same thing. Like I have so I play intramurals. I've played like all four years that I've been here, and I've I just have so much respect for the students that voluntarily referee against like with other students playing because i those get pretty competitive as i'm sure you know like yeah so <laughs> they get they get pretty competitive and and people again if you've grown up playing sport your whole life and then you come to university intramural is just such a i think such a cool factor for post-secondary education because that's a way you still get to play sport or if, like i never grew up playing football for example but getting a chance to play flag football at school was at university was still like a cool experience to have and then there are sports on top of that that you've never heard of or maybe never played like chook ball or, or there was like Quidditch. I know when I was there in my fourth year, there was cricket. So like things, things that maybe you never tried, you got a chance to do on campus while you were while you were there at school. Yeah, there's such a big range of uh, of leagues, which is always cool. There's sort of something for everyone, I always say. But jumping back sort of inside the classroom into your uh, time in the sport management program, uh, any standout classes, experiences? Uh, maybe internship uh, courses that you might have completed uh, during your time. At yeah, Park. I think I think what stands out for me when I think back to classes is in my I think it was a first year class with Professor Chard and he spoke about he spoke about like in the sport industry, there'd be three realms that as we're looking forward and we're kind of looking for jobs as we go through, they're going to be a part of these three realms. Um, and I had two two of my roommates, actually. So three of us total who were also in sport management. And I remember I remember just him going over, there'd be public sport. So if you work within a school or a structure that way, uh, there'd be professional sport and there'd be not for profit. So those being the three sort of um, avenues that that sport can go down. And now with those uh, two other friends that I still have, um, I work for Jay's Care Foundation, that being the not for profit. Um, one of them works for uh, the Toronto Blue Jays, so being professional. And then the other is an athletic coordinator at a school. So three of us going through the program, virtually in, in the same classes through uh, four years, give or take, um, and three of us just finding the three avenues. So that that course always stands out to me. Um, and then I think it was in my third or fourth year taking event management and you walk through a plan of like a certain sporting event. I think you get to design it or it gets to, uh, assigned to you. I can't I can't remember fully. Um, and just walking through the entire event, like a one day event that requires so much planning, you made an event plan um, and you think about all the different things that go on to it. Um, and I think I, I remember that as well, because I, I know when I was working in or when I was at Brock, um, Brock Sport was putting in the applic or Brock University was putting in the application for um, the Canada games that are now the, the facility is being built on the Brock campus and it's going to take place. So kind of at the same time when we were working on that event uh, plan through that course, that was sort of happening and now to sort of see it all through. And now in my job, we'll, we'll work on big events. And yeah, I always think back to, to sitting in that lab and working through a, a Word document for a couple of weeks, but seeing how much planning goes into some of these big events. So th that was definitely another course that uh, that stood out for me. Super valuable course, I agree. Um, definitely one of the ones that has really stuck with me that I've taken. Uh, and also one of the things I always talk about is like transferable skills. So event management is one of those things that it doesn't just happen in sports, it happens in, in all industries, right? So um, you're definitely gonna pick up some skills. So even if you don't end up working in sports, uh, you'll all you'll still get all of those uh, necessary uh, pieces of knowledge there. It's it's cool that also that you've seen the uh, Canada game sort of from start to finish. I mean, now it's supposed to be finally happening in the summer of 2022. I think it got pushed back a couple of times. So that's cool. Right. That saw um, sort of the early stages of that at the time. Um, but then I guess jumping a little bit forward, uh, you mentioned sort of the three sectors of sport, and that's something that gets hammered home uh, is that you don't just have to work in professional sports, but you have a bit of a unique um, current role because you're working for a pro professional sports team, but more on the sort of non-for-profit uh, corporate social responsibility side. So what has led you to your role 
with the Blue Jays and which, with the Jays Care Foundation? What are some standout experiences for you so far? I, I think what led me here, uh, of course, going through Brock and studying sport management, like there are certain jobs that you're looking for, certain organizations that you want to get involved with. But for myself, uh, like throughout high school and throughout university, when I would go home in the summer, I worked at the city of Brampton um, running day camps there. Um, and that sort of gave me the the facilitation or working with youth like on the ground and doing those things. When I came to Brock and I worked in Romero's, you're working on creating leagues and creating league structures, hiring staff, doing all those sorts of things. And then my baseball playing experience and I coached a little bit sort of tied all in because at Jay's Care, my role is when I first started there, it was actually a coaching role through a program called RBI, which stands for Reviving Baseball in Inner Cities. And for a recent grad, it was like five hours a week, two times a week. And I was like commuting from Brampton to Toronto. Does it make sense for me to do? But again, just getting sort of some experience and and putting that on my resume, I thought would be a good idea. And then from there, that summer, they were looking for individuals who were going to go across the country um, facilitating programs for Jay's Care. So at Jay's Care, there's three uh, like pillars or three areas that they focus on. So uh, girl centered sport, uh, call, and there's a program called Girls at Bat. It's a program called Challenger Baseball, which is for youth with physical and cognitive disabilities. Um, and then there's uh, the programming that we do in Indigenous communities. So there's a program called Indigenous Rookie League, um, supporting Indigenous communities and youth that way. So I traveled all throughout the country in my first year, but my experiences that led me to that were not necessarily my experience that I had within school through sport management, but it was working with kids uh, for all those years at the city of Brampton, I think working at Brock through the Merrill's gave me a lot of experience when it came to like league coordination, league coordination and planning. Um, and then just all the other, the, the, all the other skills that I, I hope to pick up and um, I had growing up and that's sort of what, what led me to the original role. And then when I got there after that first summer, there was an opportunity to extend my contract on to, um, to take on one of those programs specifically and plan it out and build it. And I think that's that's really where I think like my experience at Brock through intramurals really kicked in. Um, and then everything else that sort of aligned me to that, of course, my education and uh, just some of my other experience, I, I think it all tied all tied together to that point. And I think that's that's what led me to my current role. But I think like you said off the top there that Jays Care is really unique because we're a not for profit, but we're a part of the Toronto Blue Jays being a professional sport organization. So I think when when COVID hit, it was really like an eye. It, it really opened lots of people's eyes when there was no longer baseball playing. Um, our foundation was still moving. We were still going. But during the year when games are, are taking place, we're in the community. Like throughout a summer, I don't get to catch too many baseball games because I'd be traveling to the communities, running the programs that we do. But when baseball stopped, um, Jay's Care was, we were still moving and still going through that. And we had so much support from other colleagues at the Toronto Blue Jays who their roles were stopped because no games were taking place. But it's a really cool mix to see a professional sport organization. But the work that we do is sort of in a different space. Um, yeah, it, it's sort of really unique in, in that structure for sure. Very unique for sure. And I like how you can sort of draw a line from your all the way back to your first year at Brock, all of the stuff you did in intramurals outside of the classroom, as well as your education leading up to your current career path. I think that's that's cool to see. Um, but I've got a few sort of last questions here just before we wrap up. One of them wasn't on our uh, rundown that we sent you, so I apologize if I'm putting you on the spot here. But you mentioned growing up in the GTA. Um, so were you always a big Jays fan? Yeah, growing up, I think playing baseball. Um, like my parents uh, came to the country when they were teenagers. So like playing sport came from an old next door neighbor that we had. Uh, the Blue Jays being like world champs back to back way back in the day, my brother got involved in baseball and that was kind of where we sort of, uh, we sort of got into baseball growing up. So I played it growing up and I think for myself, it's, it's really unique now, but as a kid growing up in the GTA, you get to go to maybe one or two baseball games a, a year. And it's like the coolest thing you go in there, you smell the food, like all of like the cliches about a stadium is true. And now through my role, I, I walk into that building every day and that's my job. And it's like, it's really cool some days when, you know, you're working really hard and you're, you're forgetting or 
you're trying to draw on the uh, the motivation that you need. I've had people, I've, I've gone to games with them or I'll work my day nine to five and then the game will be at seven. They'll come and, and they'll be like, whoa, this is really cool, man. Like you, you are working for the Toronto Blue Jays in this building. And I think for someone, yeah, like, like you just said, grew up in the GTA, going to those games, the fan to now be under that umbrella. It's, it's, it's really cool to see. And the work that the role that I'm in right now is so rewarding that like, it's, you, you have the fuel to be able to do it. It's uh, just, just pushing through all the things that have come. And I think like the last years have been a, a real example of that, but yeah, definitely a, a Blue Jays fan growing up. And now it's just the coolest thing to be able to, to say that's my employer as well. That's uh, yeah, it's exactly what I was getting at. It's just sort of like how those feelings and how like that fandom has changed since you started working for the organization. So I think that's really cool. It must be a very, very uh, interesting experience. But shifting back to Brock now for the last couple of questions, if you could offer one piece of advice for a current or an incoming sport management student, what would that piece of advice be? I think the advice I would give, of course, when you when you're in university, professors, teachers, everyone there, they're going to tell you to get involved and to network and to do, to do all those things. And that's very valid. And that's exactly what you need to do. But it doesn't always have to look a certain way. You don't need to be reaching out to industry professionals and asking for coffee chats because those things are valuable. But I think if I could give any experience to a current student or um, a future student is that the experiences that you'll get at university and the people you'll meet, you'll never get again. Those are like opportunities that will come once in a lifetime. So the experiences can be or the networking can come from you joining an intramural sports team with people you don't know or joining a club or um, doing something that maybe you hadn't planned on doing or meeting a person or going for coffee with someone that maybe you don't know or it could be meeting a prof. But I think the experience I would give is to take advantage of all the experiences you have there. Um, it'll be hard to find another time where you're around so many like minded people, but also people who are willing to connect. Um, and I think the other piece of advice that I would give is like at university, there are going to be different times where maybe your classmates are getting roles or getting internships or um, there's positive news coming on LinkedIn. And maybe for yourself, that's not that's not happening. And I think a lot of the time timing is a big a big part in when you find a role and what's right for you. But if you can find some of those areas, if it's on campus or off campus that uh, has something you enjoy, maybe has something that has a skill. It doesn't necessarily need to be the exact job. If you want to coach, you don't need to find a coaching job. But I know when I worked recruitment at Brock after I graduated, the job, I didn't really know what I was going to take away from it. But every day I had to public speak. Every day I had to work on my interpersonal skills. And those are skills that you can take now. And I take as I walk in, in my future jobs and my future roles and things like that. So finding those experiences, if it's a job, if it's an internship, if it's volunteering, it doesn't have to directly align to what you want to do. But if you can start to build your skill set um, and build on some of those things, eventually, eventually the opportunity is going to come. Or one of those people that maybe you join that intramural team with is has an experience at their future employer or something like that. And you just never know. There's no. There's no one else that you're competing against when you get to it. You just need to take what you have, the experiences you have, and make the most of them. And when the timing is right, you're, something is going to pop up, and it's, it's just going to fall into place. So that's the advice I would try to give. That's excellent advice. Um, I'm definitely going to remember that personally. And I think you know, the word networking always gets thrown around. We hear it a lot. I mean, probably in every university program, but especially in sport management. You hear networking all the time, um, but I think it's just really important to remember that there's no there's no right way to build a network, right? It's sort of whatever exactly. is the right way for you. So that's very good advice. And then the last question we have here, something I like to ask everyone that comes on the podcast here. Uh, what is one of your favorite places on Brock's campus? Why is that your favorite place? So it could be a place that you have like a really special connection to, uh, have a good memory associated with it, pretty mm -hmm. much anything. Uh, the two places I would say, I, I think, uh, Ian Bettis was an, an interesting place because I think like working in intramurals and rock sport, you were there for your leagues, you played volleyball or ultimate frisbee or kickball inside, but then you also had exams there. And I thought that was such an interesting, interesting thing. You'd go and sit there and you'd be scared during exams, but then you had so much fun. So like the gyms, um, all those spaces were cool. But then I also think 
brought like when I I remember coming to uh, fall preview day with my parents and we went to Isaac's on campus and I thought that was such a cool place for people to like connect and meet you could be waiting for your bus but you can go in there and have a bite um, they started to add different vendors and things like that and it becomes the coolest the coolest space in the day and then of course on the weekends or Thursday nights there's other things that happen on campus I think that is such a cool thing for the for the university experience and building that university community um, and yeah I think it just like encompasses what going to university is all about right and in, in the day it's a cafeteria and the night um, it's a place where people can gather and like now I see pictures and they put modified indoor ice rinks they have concerts there like that was just always a place I knew I was connecting with certain people and I think you'd be walking through there and it would be hard to not see someone that you know. So I hope for, for students now and, and in the future, they have the chance to experience the entire campus because uh, there's so many places like that that everyone holds to them. But I know Isaacs was a cool one for me and anywhere in the Ian Bettis, Gym 2, the intramural office, those were uh, the zone. Those are all spaces that uh, I knew I spent a lot of time and those are probably my favorite on campus. There you go. Those are great choices. I really like that question because everyone always has a different answer. But I will say Isaac's does get brought up a lot. Uh, people seem to really like the food. I like the food there as well. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Turkey Club is probably my go to there. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are great answers. Alex, thank you very much. That's all I had for you. Did you have anything you wanted to add before we head out? No, I think for uh, for anyone listening, Brock is a place that I hold very close to me and I know lots of people who listen to this podcast are probably thinking about university or uh, what's going to come next. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a great place. You'll you'll learn a lot about yourself and you'll you'll have a great four years or how many every years it is. And Liam, I just want to thank you and I appreciate you having me on and hope you stay safe. All right. Thank you very much. We'll see you. Thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, you can contact us at brocku.ca slash discover slash contact.